Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for the first edition of Focal Point, where we will focus on all things fine art in OPS. I'm Anthony. And I'm Nida Well, from students, singers, and stage performers, digital designers, and dancers. To pottery makers and poetry performers. If it's a fine art in OPS, we'll do our best to bring it to you here on Focal Point. Our show begins with a salute to young artists everywhere. March is Youth Art Month, and as a part of that celebration, several OPS students have their artworks on display in a big way. You may notice it as you're driving around Omaha. That artwork of more than a dozen OPS students is posted on giant billboards. The Billboard Art Display Project is an annual tradition that spans more than 35 years. OPS art teachers select students for the honor, with the exception of Blue Cross Blue Shield. Blue Cross employees opt to pick a Conestoga Elementary student's work. The art comes from students of all ages and stays on the billboards for 30 days. Lamar Advertising provides the billboard space at a reduced cost. Adopt school partners pay the other half. We'll bring you a look at all the students' artwork at the end of the show. Some of Burke High's most talented students hit the stage recently for the annual Mr. and Ms. Burke High Talent Show. The Career Center's Eves was there and found out the show is about much more than displaying talent. There is great talent at the 10th annual Mr. and Mrs. BHS Talent Show. Yes. But most students would agree that they do not only do it for themselves, but for and with the kids at the Respite Care Center. I think this is just like a great opportunity because it's not about us, it's about the kids. I don't know, just seeing the smile on the faces while they're performing and seeing all the crowd out here just cheering them on. Even bad or good, no matter what, they're cheering them on. It's just like everyone's just kind of together. And it's really all about building that relationship with the children from the Children's Respite Care Center. People gather there to not only enjoy their talents but also help fundraise for the Respite Care Center. Thank you. And it's so awesome to see them get out there and um, fundraise for an organization that isn't for them. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky. At the end of the night, two talents jumped in glee as they were pronounced Mr. and Mrs. BHS. I see friends shaking hands saying, Mr. BHS is Jordan Frog. Yeah. The new 2015 Miss BHS is Leona Dunn. Well, first I was nervous. First act, I messed up, but <laughs> just makes this all worth it. But even though they won, Leona and Jordan say they do it for the kids at their respite care center. I think like this, all this stuff, you know, makes it worth it at the end. This is Eve's reporting for Focal Point. A Central High annual talent show that began more than a hundred years ago continued this year with another impressive slate of students. The Central High Bro Show draws a diverse mix of talent from musicians to dancers. We stopped by a few weeks before the road show's opening night and found students were already hard at work practicing for the big day. Well, we are just going through run-throughs. We just did ours and um, it went pretty good. Practice is more important than people probably realize because like, you know, you need to get it right. There's a lot of rehearsing to get it ready, get it memorized, and make sure it's, you know, not gonna mess up at the performance. It's not just the performers putting in long hours during the road show rehearsals. People behind the scenes play an important role as well, including the sound crew students who control microphones and music. It's a lot of work. I mean, we're probably here for like at least 100 hours from start to finish. It's a lot of fun and you get to meet new people and you learn a lot. The scenery and deck crew workers are crucial to the success of the show too, moving set pieces on and off the stage. It's a lot of muscle work and um, yeah. making sure you don't run into other people. You need to uh, stay out of everyone's way, but also push them out of the way at the same time. So. After weeks of rehearsing, the students put on multiple roadshow performances to give students, staff, and alumni ample opportunity to enjoy the show. It's fun and it's nice to perform in front of everybody. This was the 101st year for the Central High Roadshow. The classic stories of Romeo and Juliet and The Little Mermaid may seem like they're oceans apart, but elements of both stories surfaced in a recent theater performance at Burke High. Here's Focal Point's Sean with an inside look at the popular production of Once on this Island.
Hey everyone, Sean here. Today I'm at the Break High Theater. We'll be talking about the performance of Once Upon This Island. Today I'm joined by Mrs. Mokriski, the director of the show, Jack Lammers, the tech director, and lead role Haley Bungie. So, Mrs. Mo, tell us a little about the show. Uh, the show, Once on This Island, is a retelling of The Little Mermaid. Um, not the Disneyfied version, but the uh, Hans Christian Andersen version uh, about Little Mermaid. So it's set on an island, obviously, hence the title, Once on This Island. Uh, so it's about a young Timun falling in love with the French Daniel on the other side of the island and what happens. I can just see there's a lot of things that went into this set with the walkways and all that. How complex is this? It's a very big set. But yet, it looks very big, but yet when it comes down to the actual, when you we actually started building it, it was actually really easy. And if I'm correct, Haley, this is your second show, first lead role? At Burke, yeah. How does it feel getting that lead role? I worked pretty hard to get it, and so when I found out that I did get the lead role, I was so happy and very proud of myself. And there's a lot of pressure, but it, it's worth it. To, for the end result. So. It is quite an ambitious production because it's very, very music heavy. Um, and we have the entire cast, which we have about 70 cast members, um, is on stage almost the whole time. Uh, there's only a few moments where they all leave. So it's quite ambitious in trying to figure out how to keep them all engaged, how to make it interesting for the audience to watch, where they're going to move. Um, and just the logistics of that. And then the music, um, there's not so a lot of acted scenes, so we just have a, a good amount of music that the whole cast has to learn. Okay. A little spoiler here. What is your favorite part of the show? Well, right now I'm learning my dance part of the show where I have to dance and do a solo in front of most of the cast. And I'm really excited. For my part, I just look at the, the set and tech-wise because I have friends they come in and look at that too, and they'll probably think, well, in my opinion, they'll come in saying that set is big, how'd they do it? Um, every time that I have talked to someone who has seen the show before, they all say it's fantastic, and they're really excited to see our version of it, and they all love the music in it, especially, and so I think it's going to be a success. Okay, you guys, thank you for joining us. Break a leg, and see you guys next time. The entrance of Mars Magnus Center has taken on a colorful new look. A giant mural now greets visitors as they walk through the door. A local Omaha artist recently painted the colorful scene and it took weeks to create. Through conversations with me and Mr. Keel, who's the librarian up here, uh, the one who kind of, you know, got the whole thing rolling, uh, me and him met, talked. He kind of had, I guess, a foundation that he had been thinking on for a while, um, which was to incorporate elements of the surrounding area, so South Omaha. You have the bridge, the railroad, just the different cultures, the corn, uh, the sower, um, which was actually my idea to throw the sower in there because being a middle school library, uh, the Golden Sower is like the highest award that a children's literature can win in the state of Nebraska, so I was like, what a more appropriate symbol than the Golden Sower. I'm more of a fantastical type painter. I want to throw in weird elements, you know, and I like having a very busy surface with a lot going on, and it was just too boring for me at first. So I took the sketch, and I started tweaking and adding kind of some stranger things um, in there, like the squid and uh, balloons and stuff like that. Just the whole idea behind adding you know, different elements to it was um, trying to bring in that more fun uh, story, uh, story-based imagery. Some of the, the characters um, and situations in the painting um, were derived a little bit from um, tall tales and children's stories. The first piece I've ever had in a permanent public space. Um, you know, I've shown it a few places before, but you know, this is not going anywhere, hopefully, for a while. The essence of creating art isn't always about the beauty you see in the picture. For some, it's a memory to keep and share for generations to come. One Holocaust survivor and artist began a series of fabric pictures in the 70s to help retell her story. Now her legacy is being shared around the world and to students at Lewis and Clark Middle School. 
There's a saying that every artist writes his own autobiography. Like I wanted the water to look really realistic, so I put, like I used actual water and in the pastels, so it looks like I had texture. Isabella Rudd is one of six Lewis and Clark Middle School students who is recreating her past memories with color and fabric. We had four different evenings here with them, and the first two uh, were to teach the kids a little bit about the Holocaust, a little bit about the Holocaust in Poland. This is all surrounding an exhibit down at Koneko called Fabric of Survival. 36 hand embroidered uh, fabric collage panels that were created by Esther Nissenthal Krinitz, um, who was a Holocaust survivor. She created them for her daughters and now since her passing they have become an exhibit that's traveled worldwide. After viewing the Holocaust exhibit, the students create their own fabric of survival. It was my favorite family memory and it was when we went to the beach in California, and it's not completed yet, but uh, I'm gonna add like pink starfish with fabric. With wax pastels, needles, and thread, other students like Jacob and Anaya tell a story of being bullied. It kind of resembles like how they had hardships, but they had more hardships than me. This is when I was in sixth grade, like people were mean to me. We all have experiences where we're challenged, where um, we have to step up with some courage, and so we ask them to do something similar to that and, and let them experience some artistic media maybe that they had not experienced before. That's all for this edition of Focal Point. Be sure to watch for future episodes on the Knowledge Network, Cox Channel 18. You can also see this show on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Omaha Public Schools and you'll see us there. We leave you now with a look at that OPS student artwork we can see on billboards all around Omaha. Thanks for watching and have a great day.